Get More from the Cloud, a podcast by AWS cloud experts at Ingram MicroCloud. Hello and welcome to the first installment of Get More from the Cloud. My name is Colby Brakefield. I'm the AWS Vendor Business Manager here at Ingram Micro, where I own the relationship and go-to-market strategy for our US AWS business. For a little background on me, prior to my time at Ingram, I worked at the partner level, selling cloud professional services for all major hyperscalers. And prior to that, I built the Azure IoT practice at another distributor centered around connecting the edge to the cloud and the infrastructure that supports those solutions. So really the last five or so years of my career has been solely focused on the cloud and more specifically on the infrastructure side of the cloud. So joining me today to co-host this podcast is Ingram Micro's very own Tad Davis. So Tad, why don't you give us a little intro on yourself? Hey, thanks, Colby. So this is Tad Davis. I'm with the Global Infrastructure as a Service team here at Ingram Micro. A little bit of background about myself. I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. I have been within distribution for the past 10 years and focused on cloud, specifically around AWS for the past four years. Awesome. Thanks, Tad. So before we introduce our guest for today's episode, I want to give just a quick brief overview of what this podcast is and what we hope to achieve here. So distribution typically has a bit of a bad rep as being nothing more than a box pusher or fulfillment center, or in some cases, a bank. Um, but Ingram Micro, we're, we're trying to change that narrative a little bit. And in the world of AWS, we have a completely different value when it comes to our partners. So it all stems from enablement. AWS can be quite the complicated beast for anyone who's worked in the space for some time. And really, our, we're playing a role of helping navigate and accelerate our partner's journey as it relates to building their AWS practice. So our goal for this podcast is simply just to educate our partners, whether new to AWS or born in the cloud, um, but kind of new to distribution on the partner programs, the topics and the solutions that surround AWS that can help them build and grow a sustainable, healthy cloud practice. So we'll be releasing kind of a series of podcasts designed to help our partners every step of that way. Tad, anything you want to add to that as to kind of what we hope to achieve out of this? Yeah, I think you, you kind of hit it right on the head there, Colby. I mean, it's really about enablement. For, for partners, one of the common things that I've, I've gotten over the years, especially around getting into the cloud and, and even, you know, regards to AWS is there is a lot of great information but it's almost an overabundance of information. You need somebody to kind of, to help navigate, be that leader through the woods, if you will, help them figure out uh, where they need to go. Exactly. And that's where we come in. We work with hundreds, thousands of partners that have gone through this so we can help kind of support that journey and make sure we're providing best practices to help streamline it, make sure it goes a little faster. So today's episode, we're going to start from the beginning, building an AWS practice. And our guest today has quite a bit of knowledge in this space. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce John Fry. John, can you give us a little about your role and kind of what you're bringing to the table as this conversation? Yeah, thanks, Colby. Um, yeah, my name is John Fry. I'm a partner enablement program manager here at Ingram Ico. I've been doing partner consulting work for many, many years. And for the last four or five years, uh, I've been focused in the cloud space my role here at Ingram is to um, put programs together to help our partners accelerate their cloud growth and then uh, other you know, activities like doing joint strategic business planning and things along those lines. So um, my goal is to, is to help our partners grow uh, in AWS and the cloud, and uh, we all reap the, the benefits as we, uh, as we take uh, this journey together. Thanks, John. Yeah, and, and one other thing, just to piggyback on some of this, so I know sometimes when you're working the world of distribution, things tend to get a little salesy. Um, our goal is not to be another sales pitch. Um, again, help our partners understand what we can do to help them walk through this. So um, let's kind of get started in this. So really kind of stepping back a little bit away from building an AWS practice, I, I want to make sure we're kind of all speaking the same language. I want to make sure we're all kind of starting at the same point. So I want to kind of define cloud. And so I know there's different kind of variations of cloud. And even here at Ingram Micro, we use the term IaaS, which is where our, our, our AWS practice falls. So maybe Tad, maybe you can kind of help us kick that off by explaining kind of what is cloud, what IaaS is, and kind of what are the different components of cloud and maybe give an uh, example to help the audience uh, kind of know what we're talking about. Yeah. So that's one of the things, right? Like if I walk into a room and say, do you know the difference between IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS? We're getting eyes crossed already, right? So let's think about, you know, I'm owning a car. So I own the, the whole car. 
I am responsible for registration. I'm responsible for making sure maintenance is done. I got to fill it up with gas and everything. That's our traditional on-premise data center, right? So that is uh, making sure that everything's cabled correctly, everything's powered up, um, all that kind of good stuff. So what is infrastructure as a service? When I think of infrastructure as a service or IaaS, that's more like me renting a car. So if I rent a car, you know, I've got to go ahead and fill out the agreement. I've got to make sure I drive it okay and I give them my driver's license. I'm making sure that there's some form of insurance there, right? And I've got to make sure it's fueled up or I'll end up getting those, you know, huge add-ons at the end. That's kind of what IaaS in the cloud is like. But when we talk about PaaS or platform as a service, so platform as a service is going to be if I were taking an Uber somewhere, right? An Uber or Lyft. So now I just have to use the app identify where I'm going and what I'm doing, make sure that I make contact with that driver, but they're taking care of everything else. So it's their vehicle, they're maintaining it, making sure it's insured, they're fueling it up, right? So equivalent kind of thing there would be, you know, I'm, I have somebody in the cloud and they're taking care of everything else. I'm just running my, my workload in that particular environment and it's managed for me as well. So the last thing is SaaS, so software as a service. Software as a service, I kind of equate that to like public transportation, right? All you got to do is I've got to have a card to get on the bus, a card to get on the metro, but they take care of everything else. They get me where I'm going. I'm just responsible for knowing when I start and when I get off, when I finish that journey, if you will. So speaking of journeys, though, you know, that's what we need to talk about and figure out how does a partner begin on this? So, you know, where do we make that start? So, John, you want to be able to talk a little bit more about that as far as where a partner starts that particular journey? Sure. Thanks, Ted. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in my experience, first, you know, foundationally, so we're talking about, you know, AWS in that, in that IaaS space, right? You need to really figure out what it is that you're going to sell in AWS. So, there are hundreds of AWS services. So there are hundreds of things you could sell. And what I would say is that I see partners in, in some cases challenged with, well, we don't know where to start. You know, we don't want to sell everything to everyone. So, you know, what I typically do is we I go through a process with the partner to identify, hey, what is, you know, what we call a superpower? What what is it that you know, you're really good at today in your traditional business. So we can align to specific technology segments. You know, if you're really good at, you know, storage and doing backups and, and recovery and things like that, maybe that's your superpower. Your superpower could be aligned to a specific vertical market. Maybe you're really strong in the, in the healthcare vertical and you have some unique intellectual property that relates to, uh, that, that helps uh, clinicians in a hospital. Um, so there's, there's, different areas where you could go in terms of what what it is that you're going to define, if you will, as your superpower. Um, and you can also have more than one. You could, you could have sort of a generalist technology focus area or superpower, and then also have some specifics in a vertical market or, or other areas like that. But it's really important to, to sort of narrow your focus so that you're not, again, trying to sell all things to all people. I also, from in, in terms of identifying what that superpower or those superpowers might be. I always like to look at, you know, what are your current capabilities and skill sets? Um, I've worked with partners that said, you know what, I hear this is a fantastic market that I'd like to go after. So I want to be known as this in the cloud. And the problem is if that's aspirational and it's not something where you have a uh, current skill set today, then it's just going to make the journey longer in terms of getting into uh, into AWS, right? One of the areas or or one of the the tasks that I like to encourage partners to to do is, you know, host a strategy session um, with the key members of your team to help narrow into, you know, what are those superpowers and what is it that we want uh, to go sell in AWS? And it doesn't have to be, you know, this is the this is the only thing we're going to sell for five years, right? It's just a, a sort of a starting point. It's a, it's a really good point, John. And one thing I want to kind of drill back into to really kind of make sure we, we get this point across is you start with what you're good at. 
So it's, I know a lot of, a lot of partners that want to jump into AWS and it can be a daunting task because there's so many things you mentioned, there's hundreds of services within AWS that you can tackle. And, and there's a couple of things to narrow in on. What are you good at? What do you have a team that's already built capable of doing? So what technologies are you currently already supporting your customers? Are you, are you in the hypervisor space? You know, then at that point, then you can kind of focus on that, that migration, working on EC2 instances, working with the technologies that align in AWS to what you are currently doing as a good starting place. And so, yeah, going back to that superpower, I think it's just a great thing to understand what you're good at and how to align that to how you build your business with AWS. So kind of piggybacking off of that, let's, let's kind of dig into the resources that you need to be successful. So I talked a little bit about the, the members of your team, the capabilities you have. Maybe John, can you go into a little more detail on too, like what resources need to be present to be successful when it comes to building that AWS practice? Sure. Yeah. So if, if you know, going back to that, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned, you know, having a strategy session, sitting down and, and identifying the superpowers and so forth. It's important to have um, the resources from all areas of your business included in that strategy session or those strategy sessions. And so I look at, you know, it's important to have executive leadership. It's important to have members uh, or, or, or key stakeholders from the, from the standpoint of sales, marketing, uh, your technical teams, whether those are pre-sales uh, or, or delivery, bringing all of those uh, sort of resources into uh, the discussion um, is, is key because what I've seen happen at times is, Partners say, okay, well, we've decided we're going to go, you know, we're going to go sell this. Uh, this is going to be our, our AWS strategy. Um, but if all those other uh, key members throughout the organization weren't included, then it can create, um, you know, some challenges because you're not, you're not all on the same page and you've decided, okay, we're going to go sell this. So sales is on board, but they don't have the technical uh, backing, if you will. So if you go out and uncover an opportunity, you don't have that pre-sales support behind them to help with the more technical elements of the sales cycle. And then beyond that, if we do actually get the deal, we've got to be able to have the service delivery resources to be able to go ex execute on that, put a um, you know an effective solution uh, out there into uh, in, with your customer in their environment in the environment in AWS, and if all those pieces and and all those resources aren't you know pulling in the same direction, so to speak, um, then you know you you could have had a great strategy, but it's still going to fail because you didn't have buy-in uh, from the top down and inclusion of all those uh, all those areas of the business from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely, and I've I've seen that my own. Um his experience, just kind of not having that alignment between sales and, and the technical team. And so getting out there and trying to sell something that at the end of the day, we don't really have the ability to deliver on. Um, never good to be in front of a customer and, and sold them on something, get them, they paint that vision of what it's like to have their, their workloads up in, in AWS. And then at the end of the day, it's, you can't really deliver on it. So not a great place to be in. Um, salespeople like to sell. And so you need to make sure that they understand that you can actually deliver on that and, and vice versa. You want to make sure that you have people that are actually selling the solutions that your team is capable of doing. So we see that all the time. Partners don't get that alignment and it, it tends to kind of be a, a stopping point before they even get the ball rolling. Tad, any, anything you'd like to add to that or we, you want to kind of move on to kind of our next next topic? So I just kind of want to summarize there, you know, really quick is, and stress that because you guys have stressed it a lot, but I mean, just making sure that it's, you know, when we talk about what a superpower is, it's that strength that you're good at. It's something that you do well today, right? And um, it's not aspirational. That's, that's the important thing. But then, you know, like you said, bringing those resources together to move in a collaborative fashion forward with the, in the same direction, that's really important. And and it really guides then and starts informing on your cloud strategy, right? So when we think about that, you know, then we start taking a deeper look into, um, okay, you know, what are maybe some solutions that we can focus on? What, what kind of plays should we be in there? But with, you know, John, just based on your experience, you know, when we're doing that kind of, you know, SWOT analysis, if you want to call it that, or even you know, really more of a gap analysis, finding out, you know, what we do well within our business, we may have some gaps around marketing, you know, I think that's a common one that you and I've run into before, 
where there's gaps in marketing, but what are some good, good things to look for when you're trying to define where your strengths and weaknesses are, where those gaps may be? Yeah. So, well, thanks, Todd. From a, from a process perspective, I mean, you mentioned, you know, a SWOT analysis or a gap analysis. That's, a, I, I think, a great way to start that discussion. So, you know, again, getting all those right resources in the, in the room, so to speak, to help hammer out what is our strategy uh, in AWS going to look like you know, sit there and, and that SWOT process or, you know, what are our strengths? You know, if we have weaknesses, let's identify them so that we're not, you know, putting our, our focus into an area where maybe we don't have the technical bench strength to support that solution day one. Maybe that should be more of a six or nine months down the road type of area where we want to focus those types of things. That SWOT and or gap analysis process to really look at, you know, get, get everything out on paper uh, or a whiteboard or whatever that looks like, get it out there and start to you know, talk through, okay, well, if, if we're going to, uh, if we're going to focus in this area, does everybody in the room agree that, you know, we're ready to support that day one? If not, what are our gaps? Are they easily overcome? Is it an educational gap? We need to get some training. Maybe it's a resource gap. You know, we should probably look at hiring uh, another technical resource who already has the capabilities or skills to be able to support that offering from a cloud perspective. Maybe it, you know, in an on-prem environment, we have skills that are great at it, but they've never deployed it into AWS. So we need to look at, you know, is that a train uh, that uh, resource or those resources thing, or is it, um, you know, maybe looking to hire external resources to come in and help supplement um, our current bench, those types of things. Um, but it kind of starts with that sort of gap analysis or SWOT process to look at, you know, again, all areas of the business, figure out where the gaps are, figure out how easy they are to overcome, and then put a strategy or a plan in place uh, to go fill those gaps and, and some timing behind it as well. And it's not really like a, it's not a finger pointing like, you know, hey, you know, you got to do better kind of thing. It's more of a, hey, we're all friends here. Let's fit, let's define these areas and then let's start progressing with the plan to to improve in those areas where we need to improve upon, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it going on top of that, it, again, it's, there's no finger pointing, but it, it's a real conversation because this doesn't change overnight. It it is when we talk about digital transformation and 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 changing your business model, particularly for a partner who may have been in the resale space for quite some time. There's sometimes you'll get in a room and you're looking at potentially cannibalizing existing business to pursue new avenues or revenue streams through AWS. And it's having a real conversation as to, hey, where are our customers going? We need to meet them where they're going, not just continue selling them same widgets that we've always sold them. So it's, it's a, having a real conversation, not pointing the finger, but making sure that you know where you are so that way you can kind of get started on that process. And I think that's the kind of the key thing is, is to make sure that it's real, make sure that everyone's kind of singing from the same, same song sheet. Yeah. And that's one of the things too, like when I, when I have like an engineering conversation with, you know, an engineering group at a particular partner or things like that, I, I want to know, for example, like they, they may not even have, you know, a big strength in cloud whatsoever. There may be really data center focused, but then that gives me an opportunity to dive in a little bit and learn about, you know, kind of like their superpowers are when we we're talking about before, because I want to know, where their professional certifications lie. Not, you know, not so much AWS, especially if they don't have any AWS ones, but you know, what are um, my other vendor certifications that are, are relevant? Your HPs, your Dells, your Cisco's, you know, any of those type, type of major vendors, what are, where are your professional certifications around that? Because it tells me you have talented engineers within your organization that have a focus on networking, that have a focus on storage or have a focus in other areas like that. And that kind of can lead to a conversation, right? Then to be, okay, so where do we focus now in AWS? And, you know, tying this back to what we were talking about at the beginning, you know, where are our, you know, our delivery superpowers in that sense as well? How does that start beginning to translate into AWS certifications, accreditations, what does that path look like as we go forward? So there's different partner tiers in AWS. There's different partner paths now. So partner paths in, you know, like the services path do have a very, uh, you know, very defined tier component. And at those different tier levels, you've got to achieve so many, you know, business and technical accreditations or so many 
professional certifications, technical certifications, launched opportunities, different things like that. So how does how does this inform on that? Well, then you can start aligning. Okay, if I have somebody that's good, you know, architecting solutions or things like that, if I train them up on AWS and how architecting works on AWS, perhaps that technical person now wants to focus on, you know, an associate professional or specialty certification that lends credence to the, the, the experience that they're getting working in AWS. And so that leads me to another thing real quick too. Start thinking of the personas that need to be trained on different things. And we touched on that a little bit earlier, like your sales, your marketing, your pre-sales, your delivery. So they each have their talents and their expertise, but what are some good accreditations or certifications for them to trend towards? I would say definitely, you know, a sales persona, um, even marketing persona, that's good for like an AWS business accreditation. That's something that you'd want to help help them learn to do that and then move into another you know, sales marketing persona, which is the cloud practitioner certification. That's a foundational certification. And on the flip side, you might have your pre-sales or your delivery people that uh, focus on a technical accreditation to get that knocked out and then start focusing on technical certs. So just as an example, when I think about the tiers and, and where they are in AWS, I'll focus just on registered and select. To make that move from register select, you got to hit what I call like the rule of two, right? You've got to hit two business accreditations, two technical accreditations, two foundational certifications, which are equivalent of the cloud practitioner certification, and then two associate level or higher. Associate level certifications can be sysops, developer, solutions architect, and it progresses upwards. You got professional and specialty certs out there as well. But trying to, to map this out to figure out you know, which persona is going to pursue which certification and how many I have to, to hit to be able to get into select, this is all an important part of the process, trying to map that out and help you um, accelerate your journey into AWS Cloud. So anything else you guys want to add around certifications, accreditations, and things like that for AWS? No, I, I think if we dig any deeper, that's going to be a whole other podcast episode. Hint, hint. <laughs> so exactly. let's, 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 kind of, let's, let's kind of move on from that one because I think there's just quite a bit we can cover when it comes to certifications and accreditations. So we'll, we'll save that for another day. So, so John, I'm going to kind of move back into you know, building this practice. So, you know, we've talked about kind of where do they begin, what resources you need to be successful, identifying your superpower and your, your strategy. So once all that framework has been set up, once a partner's kind of figured out, hey, this is what I know I'm good at. These are the resources I have to move forward. What pitfalls can a, pit, a partner kind of expect to run into as they start building out this practice? What should they know walking in, walking into this? I would say that, you know, one of the big areas I see of challenges um, are, you know, sort of failing to consider what I call like the second tier impacts of the decisions you make. So it seems daunting, I guess, but try and think a couple of steps down the road as you're going through this business planning process. Um, what you, what you, I've seen challenges with, or I'll just, I'll use sales as an example, right? So, you know, you decide early on, okay, well, our, our sellers are not comfortable selling cloud yet. We're trying to have, sort of build cloud uh, organically in house. So we need to get our sellers, you know, training. And so once, you know, we get them, well, you know, Tad mentioned the cloud practitioner training. If they, if we get everybody with, you know, certified, if you will, with cloud practitioner, then we should be in a good place. So what happens though, then is, you know, so it takes a little while to get the sellers trained. And then beyond that though, you, you realize, you know, the alignment between our sales team and pre-sales, you know, that there was a gap there. Um, our pre-sales team maybe isn't fully comfortable with the more technical aspects of, of cloud solution selling. So, you know, it's kind of that second tier impact of now we have our sales team with some training, but 
part of my other process was a little bit broken, right? So, you know, we need to look at pre-sales as a component of our, you know, how we're going to, what things we need to address within our strategy moving forward, you know, work, do that in parallel. Another big thing is, you know, looking at compensation strategies, for instance, you know, selling AWS as a monthly recurring revenue stream is different than selling, you know, one single place in time, you know, uh, you know, maybe larger hardware based solutions. So instead of selling something that, you know, includes X numbers of servers and compute resources and so forth on prem, where your sellers are more are comfortable being compensated for those types of sales, getting those same resources motivated to sell smaller monthly recurring uh, can also be a challenge. So again, we, we thought we, we identified that our, our primary challenge with our sales team was, you know, their cloud knowledge. So we put a training plan in place, but we didn't address their compensation. We didn't address the alignment to pre-sales, you know, those types of things. Another thing there is it's, you know, you look at that initial discussion around, you know, are they comfortable selling it? You know, you have two sort of top level options. You know, I can either try and add cloud to the portfolio of my current sales team uh, and, and train them and do those things. Or I could look at hiring, you know, some experienced cloud sellers into my organization. So again, if that's your sort of top level, hey, we've decided to bring in some experienced cloud sellers, um, that's sort of that top tier and that's the direction you've chosen to go. But what happens when you bring those sellers in and now you have the quote unquote cloud team that's trying to penetrate the same accounts that your, uh, your existing sellers are already in those accounts and so forth. So you can, you can end up with you know, a culture shock type of situation where the legacy team has great relationships, but they don't want to bring the cloud sellers in because they're taking, you know, they're taking sales away from, uh, from your traditional sales and so forth. So again, think about not only, you know, if, if we decide to do this, what are the impacts, you know, two and maybe three uh, phases down the road? What, what, what are those long-term uh, potential Im impacts going to be? If you don't factor those in from the beginning, then um, you can run in. Those, those could be your, your pitfalls, so to speak. Yeah, those are uh, some, some very good points, John. And, and I've, I've lived through some of that in, in my, my previous life. So that alignment piece is, I think, is one of those key pieces, whether it's the pre-sales of sales or you know, cloud overlay team on top of your core team. Um, those things can be uh, can, can be a, a definite hurdle if it's not worked out and determined. And, and we all know, you know, compensation is going to drive habits. So making sure your team is compensated on driving cloud solutions from a resale perspective, from a professional services perspective. Those are those, those key elements of making sure that your sales team is compensated because you can train them to the blue in the face, but if they're not getting paid on it, they're never going to sell it. So um, very good points to that. So just kind of piggyback on that. So now we, we walk through pitfalls. You know, what can they run into? Could you give us maybe an example of where you've seen a partner succeed? in building out that AWS practice and kind of say like, Hey, what, what did this partner do and, and how did that make them successful? So I've worked with, I've worked with partners that have, um, have, have struggled and I've worked with partners that have been, you know, very successful in making the, I'll say the transformation or, or building, accelerating their, their cloud practice. I will say that for those partners that have succeeded, one of the, one of the key elements is having some sort of uh, a documented strategy. And I'm, I've worked with a lot of partners that have told me, look, we don't, we don't want to take the, go through the process of, you know, sitting down and documenting a, a, a long, you know, business plan and, and so forth. And I completely get it. You basically have to take time out of the business to go work, um, you know, to work on the, the strategy on, on the business itself. So what I would say to them is, you know, you don't, I'm not, I'm not saying you should go, you know, draft a 15 page business plan, right? But it's important to have something documented because the process of going through that documentation will help flush out some of those, you know, second and third tier dependencies and, and things that we talked about, you know, that can turn into pitfalls if you don't address them. So getting something down on paper, whether that's, you know, a, a two page, you know, battle card that talks about, you know, this is our our cloud, uh, you know, value prop or mission statement, you know, those types of things. Just going through the exercise of doing the documentation takes it from, you know, 
all those those business leaders within your organization have ideas in their head around this is where we want to be in you know the cloud in six months, a year, two years, whatever that looks like. Getting it on paper and having everybody's eyes on it will help flesh out some of the some of the details, identify some of those potential gaps and pitfalls and things like that. So, you know, those are that's you know having some form of a, of a, a documented plan. Even if it's just a you know a page or two uh, to identify some of those key areas and, and get that down on paper is uh, is important. Identify you know who the early adopters are going to be in your organization, um, and and that's within each functional area of the business. So you have you may have um, I keep picking on sales, but you may have you know sellers that are really successful selling whatever your traditional solutions are, and trying to you know, get them to add cloud to their portfolio or change their course a little bit could be challenging. So maybe, you know, so look for those resources within uh, the each functional area of your team um, that are, you know, early adopters to cloud and kind of double down on those. Um, that's where I've seen, you know, it's, you'll have technical resources that just go all in on a certain, you know, one of your superpowers, for instance, there it's, it's like a, you know, it's really intriguing to them. And so then you line up a couple of sellers that are also willing to, or, or, or have a desire to pursue those types of solutions and, you know, double down on those, provide them the additional support training, whatever that looks like. And then I guess, you know, I guess the last thing I can think of is just, you know, look for, look for some small wins and then expand your cloud practice based on those uh, successes, develop things like case studies and things along those lines to show that, that you've uh, deployed successfully into AWS and, and things like that. And it doesn't have to be, hey, we migrated, you know, 15 legacy data centers into, you know, into an AWS environment. Start with, you know, look for some, from some small wins, some small successes, and use those as a springboard to be able to uh, expand and develop your, uh, your AWS practice. Yeah. And, and to piggyback on those small wins, just it, it is a building process. So I, I've talked to partners before who they, they, you, you talk to them and you ask them kind of, what is their vision of building a practice? And they're like, well, I want to get, I want to be an advanced tier partner. And it's funny because you're talking to them, they're registered tier when they, when they mention that. And so for those who are not aware, there's, there's four tiers of that services partner. Um, you have your, your registered, your select advanced and premier. And there's to, to Tad's point, there's so many qualifications along the way to get there. So when you hear a partner who's registered and you say, and they're saying they want to get to an advanced tier, they want to get competencies. It's funny because they'll say, I want to do this in the next year. And so realistically, what is the timeline for building out a, a, a successful practice? Just because again, as a partner is kind of walking through this journey, we want to be real and want to make sure they understand kind of what they're getting into and how long does it take to kind of get these wins under their belt and kind of build that out? Can you kind of give just a little bit around that? I know it's not a one size fits all, but what does that timeline almost kind of look like for a partner? Back to, to John's point real quick before I address this one. The, I think one of the important things is to know who your customer base is too, right? You don't want to go sell, you don't want to make healthcare solutions something that you're going to go do and that's your go forward thing. And you're going and talking to somebody um, that, you know, is in the telecom industry and stuff like that. They're going to have no use for that, but you, you want to be strategic in the way that you place that. But but Colby, to your point, as far as expectations, you know, move, moving through the different AWS tiers, each of the partners are going to accelerate at different speeds. Um, usually, I say, you know, six months. That's probably a good gauge for moving from registered to select. Twelve months to eighteen months. That's probably a good gauge for moving from select to advanced. When we talk about premier tier, it's almost a whole nother conversation, right? So Premier Tier has uh, quite a bit of requirements. And so I find that usually you have a a strategy that you're moving along and moving towards. And when that starts aligning with the Premier requirements, then start pursuing that particular uh, particular tier. But again, as I said earlier, you know, this is my opinion. And I feel like, you know, some partners are going to be very aggressive and can do things a lot sooner. Some partners just cannot move as fast, whether it's because number of people in the company, 
you know, their other focuses that they may have in their core business or things like that. So it may take them a little bit longer. I'll, I'll piggyback just, you know, partners that I've worked with. I would say the, the biggest, maybe the biggest bang for the buck is for those sort of registered tier partners trying to get to select. Once you get to that select tier with AWS, um, it uncovers a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you get exposed to or have access to, I'll say, in, in the AWS ecosystem. And so for that journey, you know, Ted's point around, you know, every partner moves at a different pace, but, you know, call it six months, maybe less. It really depends on, you know, kind of where you're starting, obviously, in terms of having the technical certifications and doing some of the other the other requirements, which, you know, maybe maybe Colby, that'll be another another podcast is going through the, you know, the, the tiers within AWS and so forth. Um, but that one is a relatively, you know, call it three to six months type of timing, getting from select tier to advanced tier, and then going beyond that to get AWS competencies and things along those lines, um, you know, that can take partners, uh, that can take partners a while. And, and, and you really need, as you, as you go through your journey with AWS, you know, you're, you're going to want to show, uh, I talked about earlier case studies and things like that. You want to show your successes that'll get you there. And those are the things that will, that will really help you um, meet the, the, the milestones and, and, and check all the right boxes, if you will, to get uh, through those through those tiers, and and it can take a little while because you AWS you know wants to see you know success in AWS, not just you know well we have resources who have have delivered on this type of solution, but it wasn't really in AWS. You, you got to start to show some of those uh, you know those projects and and successes within AWS in order to advance through those tiers. Yeah, and and I'll jump in real quick on what you were saying about case studies. I mean. If, if you don't have a case study library today, then you need to be building one. And that's regardless of what projects you do, you know, for your delivery team and what vendor you do them for. You need to have those case studies. And if you, if you already have that practice in place or that process in place, it's going to be a little bit easier to build these case studies for AWS. And AWS has a lot of resources to help out as far as being able to provide you guides on how to write AWS case studies. So just want to stress that right there. Yeah, thanks guys. I, th I think it's always good just to go ahead and set expectations with partners as to what this could look like. And again, it varies between the partners, um, but it does take some time to build up that practice. It, it, it's not something that happens overnight. So really uh, I want to kind of close this out just to kind of spend a little time as to talk about the resources that Ingram has to support our partners. Um, again, I don't want this to be a sales pitch by any means, but just want to go over that you know, working with Ingram, our goal is to help enable our partners, help train you, help make sure that you have all of the resources to, to build out that practice. So we do have a dedicated sales team on our IaaS team that is meant to help walk our partners through this journey. Um, so we have, a, we have a team that uh, helps kind of bring partners on board with Ingram, get them into the, the whole kind of world of distribution. And then another team that's, that's solely focused on helping you drive more rev revenue in AWS. Um, in addition to that, we've, we've got um, the ability to help when it comes to training. So Tad mentioned training and certifications, whether it's um, the cloud practitioner, all the way up to the different uh, technical certifications. We do have to offer funded training to help subsidize a lot of those costs because it can get quite expensive. So there's various mechanisms Ingram has to help build our partners' practice and even fill gaps where, where they may uh, may not be able to kind of build it out quite yet. With If, you know, if they need to have gaps in the professional services side, they can't deliver on some of the things that they want to eventually deliver on, Ingram can step up and kind of fill that gap. So there's multiple things we can do to help that. Um, also, last thing I'll kind of touch on is our, our partner transformation program. So we do offer a... a an engagement where we can help you walk through that that gap analysis, that SWOT analysis that John John mentioned, to help kind of identify what is your superpower, what are you good at, and then how can we help you go to market faster? How can we build out a, a roadmap and a game plan to get you there, and then kind of put realistic expectations around what it looks like? So we do have all of these resources to support our partners. So I want to kind of throw that in there, but but with that, I think we're about at time. So really just, John, I, I really appreciate um, chatting with you today. Uh, I've, I know I've learned a lot and I hope our listeners have, are able to walk away with something valuable, but I want to thank everyone's time for tuning in. And I hope you join us next time as we explore the world of AWS through the lens of a partner. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Get More from the Cloud, a podcast by AWS cloud experts at Ingram MicroCloud.